Are you broke? Well, welcome to the club. Just kidding. Actually, I'm not. Stick with us today for part one of our two-part series on the psychology of money. Hey there, fellow financial enthusiasts and future money-savvy folks. Welcome back to the Psych HR Geek, the one-stop shop for unraveling the enigmas of our fascinating world. Today, we're taking a thrilling journey into the mysterious world of financial psychology. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you won't miss any of our enlightening content. Through your support, we can continue to bring you eye-opening and enlightening content. So much enlightening content. You may be wondering, what's in it for me? Well, today we're here to unravel the secrets behind your financial decision-making process. Among many different topics, we'll look at attitudes towards the investment game and uncover other magical fiscal treasures. But wait, there's more! We're not just going to be crunching numbers and analyzing spreadsheets. Disclaimer, there are no spreadsheets in this video. Rather than teaching you to excel at Excel, we'll dive deep into the human factor, the intricate connection between real people and their hard-earned money. We don't deal with those fake people and their soft-earned money. I tried. To be our guide on this exhilarating expedition, we've enlisted the wisdom of none other than Morgan Housel and his groundbreaking book, The Psychology of Money, Timeless Lessons on Wealth, Greed, and Happiness. This wonderful piece of literature can act as your financial guru and it can help you understand why people sometimes make questionable financial choices. Lastly, you don't need a degree in economics to understand this video. This will be a crash course in the fascinating history of human emotions like envy, greed, and optimism and their influence on how you view money. So, fasten your seatbelts and get ready to explore many talking points such as how your personal life experiences can shape your investment strategies, why discovering a financial gem might mean sifting through a heap of financial duds, and how envy can lead investors to take risks that could jeopardize everything they've worked for. Now, let's kick things off with a captivating story that illustrates a crucial point. Everyone has their unique relationship with money and the economy. You've heard of the Great Depression, right? That notorious economic disaster that struck in the 1930s, characterized by a catastrophic stock market crash in 1929. In the United States, the Roaring Twenties came to a screeching halt. Businesses folded, families lost their homes, and life savings evaporated into thin air. Poverty and unemployment skyrocketed and hope seemed to vanish. Now, this story is undoubtedly etched in history, describing the plight of millions of Americans during those tumultuous times. But not all Americans. Picture this, John F. Kennedy running for president in 1960. When asked about his experience during the Great Depression, his response raised eyebrows. The Kennedys, he explained, were already well off in 1929. Over the next decade, their fortune didn't dwindle, it grew. By 1939, they had more servants and occupied a bigger mansion than they did at the decade's start. It was only when Kennedy attended Harvard and studied the Depression that he truly grasped the extent of others' suffering. The Great Depression wasn't just about the rich and the poor, it was about everybody. Everyone had contrasting experiences. Imagine an unemployed machinist and a prosperous Silicon Valley developer. I guess definitely not during the Great Depression, though. They not only hailed from different social strata, but also drew profoundly different lessons about money, risk, and reward. That seems logical, right? Different backgrounds equals different views about money. However, this applies to people of similar wealth depending on their individual life experiences. Think about it. An individual who grew up during periods of high inflation has a vastly different financial perspective than someone who only experienced stable prices. These early life lessons profoundly influence our financial decisions. The key takeaway is, we fancy ourselves as worldly experts, but in truth, our comprehension of the universe is often confined to a mere peek through the keyhole of reality. So when delving into the enigmatic depths of money psychology, remember this. We're like armchair philosophers with a fraction of the wisdom we imagine. In other words, we don't know Jack, but we've heard he's a great person. 
Now, let's delve into the intriguing concept of how personal experiences drive financial decision making. When economists construct models to explain financial behavior, they often assume that rational individuals make calculated decisions to maximize their gains. So let's take a detour then and talk about the lottery. Did you know that the average low-income household in the United States spends a staggering $411 annually on lottery tickets? Yet, around 40% of all households struggle to come up with $400 in case of an emergency. This behavior may seem irrational, but it's not entirely illogical. When you're living paycheck to paycheck, the lottery offers a glimmer of hope, a chance at the good life. Now let's turn our attention to a groundbreaking 2006 study by economists Ulrich Malmendier and Stefan Nagel. They meticulously combed through 50 years of data provided by the Survey of Consumer Finances, which examines Americans' financial behavior. I know, I know, I said no spreadsheets, but it was the best visual to emphasize the study. Their goal? To uncover what shapes people's investment decisions, and what did they discover? Brace yourselves for this profound shocker. Personal history, not textbook rationality, determines our attitude toward financial risk. For example, if inflation was rampant during your late teens and early 20s, you'd be highly unlikely to invest in bonds later in life. Conversely, if you enjoyed low inflation during those formative years, you'd happily continue investing in bonds as you aged, regardless of inflation's ebbs and flows. Let's take a step further and explore a similar pattern with stocks. Imagine you're born in 1970. Between your late teens and early 20s, the S&P 500 index increased tenfold. Anyone who invested in those companies struck financial gold. Now, contrast that with people born in 1950. During their formative years, the stock market was rather stagnant. Interestingly, even when the market dynamics shifted later on, their investment choices remained remarkably consistent. What does all this tell us about the psychology of money? Well, it's quite simple. Our personal experiences, particularly during those critical early years, significantly shape our financial decisions. Our understanding of economics is like a puppy trying to fit into its ancestors' wolfish shoes. A bit awkward and not entirely there yet. You know how your sweet little dog still goes berserk over squirrels despite generations of domestication? Well, our grasp of money psychology isn't much different. Turns out we're rookies when it comes to handling moolah, and here's why. Coins only started rolling around 600 BC thanks to King Aliades of Lydia. Retirement as we know it, well, that's newer than the invention of the microwave. Most folks worked until they kicked the bucket until the 1980s. Social security helped, but it wasn't until then that retirement became a reality for many. Even the trusty 401k and the shiny Roth IRA, they're younger than your favorite smartphone. The big players like hedge funds and index funds, well, they're practically still in their teenage years. And credit cards and mortgages, those only became mainstream after the GI Bill made borrowing money easier in 1944. So if you're scratching your head over your financial decisions, don't worry, it's not because you're crazy. We're all just rookies in the money game, trying to figure out our way in this brave new financial world. Now let's shift gears and dive into the captivating world of luck, a factor that plays a much more significant role in financial success than you might imagine. Nobel Prize winning economist Robert Schiller was once asked what he'd most like to uncover about investing something that couldn't be entirely known. Schiller's response was intriguing. He wanted to understand the exact role of luck in successful outcomes. You see, luck is a slippery concept. Most investors and entrepreneurs acknowledge its existence, but quantifying its precise impact on the success or failure of a venture remains challenging. In fact, it's often seen as impolite to attribute someone else's triumphs to mere chance. Yet, here's the crux. Underestimating the role of luck in financial decision-making is a grave error. Let's consider a fascinating revelation from economist Bakshar Mazumder. He found that the income of two siblings is more closely correlated than their heights or weights. 
In simpler terms, if your sibling is wealthy and taller than Shaq, you're more likely to be rich than mistaken for Jokic. Why does this happen? Well, siblings typically share similar privileges and opportunities. If parents send one child to a top-notch school, chances are they'll do the same for the other. But here's the kicker. We humans have a unique way of looking at luck. When we succeed, it's often because we attribute it to our hard work and abilities. But when others fail, we're not as generous. We tend to blame character flaws like laziness or short-sightedness. Unfortunately, our culture, which glorifies success, doesn't help. Forbes doesn't celebrate brilliant investors who went broke due to unexpected market downturns. Instead, it lauds reckless investors who stumble into their fortune. So what's the moral of this story? With you, may luck be. Oh, I'm sorry. With you, may luck be. That's my best Yoda voice, guys. <laughs> As we wrap things up, I'd like to give a huge shout out to our incredible subscribers. You truly make our world shine. Make sure to show your appreciation by hitting that like button if you found this intellectually stimulating journey enjoyable. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more captivating content. Also, we're all ears. Are you eager for more content in a similar vein? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for joining us on part one of our journey through the psychology of money. We hope you've gained some valuable insights into the complex relationship between human behavior and finance. Don't miss part two, which will drop on Friday. For those of you who crave a deeper dive into this subject, the link in the description is your gateway. And always remember, your active involvement keeps our channel vibrant, so go ahead and spread the love. As always, stay curious, stay wise, and stay financially savvy. This is the PsychHR Geek, signing off.